Okay, so think about this. Minor inconveniences, sudden changes of plans, the bad weather, water spilled over the floor, and things dropping from your hands. That was not meant to rhyme, but all these incidences, they keep ruining our sense of peace. And think about this, maybe you failed that test that you studied very hard for, maybe someone got that position that you really wanted. You had a fight with someone you care about. So if everyone in the world has gone through something like this, then isn't world peace far from possible? It's near impossible, right? No amount of reading inspirational books or watching deep movies ever prepares you for how to react when things don't go your way. No amount of reading inspirational quotes prepares you for how to react when the deadline is drawing nearer and nearer and you haven't even started your work. So, let me tell you my story. I have a test that I haven't studied for, and since I'm a good procrastinator, I decide to take another break. As I reach for the phone, the horror strikes me. Nothing has been charging for 45 minutes. My phone was dying in front of my eyes. I'm sure you, dear audience, you have been through things I'm still too young to have experienced, but I was a teenager, I mean, I am a teenager in a foreign country, a teenager with a lot of growing up to do. And the phone dying meant losing communication with my family. So I panicked. I thought that this was the end. There was no light at the end of the tunnel for me in that moment. But suddenly, I had a feeling, what if this I was going through a bad day, right? But this bad day was only as bad as I could let it be. It didn't, I shouldn't give it the right to ruin my day. It didn't have any power over me if I didn't let it have one. So I decided to pull an Uno reverse, flip the script. Maybe there was something I could learn from this experience. So first and foremost, all this stress I was feeling, it didn't have to be a bad thing. Me being stressed was proof that I cared. I cared about my situation. I was putting an effort to change this something negative into something positive. And I had friends, friends who are willing to lend me their chargers. And you guys sitting here, you've seen me panicking the last few days, haven't you? So then I looked up solutions for how to fix a charger. And now I know the difference between a cable and a charger. And that made me feel so smart that I totally forgot about the test the next day. So looking back, I learned from that event. I didn't let a bad day be a bad day. And only by learning was I able to turn my setbacks into opportunities, opportunities to grow and learn. There's, science has proven that our brain has what we call a negativity bias. This is just a fancy way of saying that our brain tends to magnify the negative. It tends to focus on all the bad things that have happened to us rather than allow us to look for solutions. Of course, our brain does this to protect us, protect us from making mistakes, protect us from harming ourselves. That's, that is a relief, but it doesn't help us much in the end, does it? But hey, at least now I have a valid reason to believe that things do get better. They aren't as bad as they seem, literally. And all these negative emotions we feel in our life, frustration, anger, sadness, jealousy, they don't have to necessarily bring us down. We can always utilize them and allow them to benefit us in the end. So let's pick an emotion, um, jealousy. It's something all of us have gone through. So let me give you another story. The school sports tryouts are going out, right? And guess what? I didn't get in. I hope that doesn't tell you anything about my sports skills, but I was mad and I was angry. And I, I'm not proud to admit this, but I was jealous of all the friends who got in. Why them and not me? But feeling all this anger, all this built up jealousy, it didn't benefit me. And it definitely didn't change the fact that I wasn't on the team. So I, I only had one option left. I could learn from the situation. And 
I tried. I asked my friends for tips on how to be better. We played a few matches. I got hit in the face with a volleyball, but that's okay. And plot twist, I still didn't get into the team. But once again, that's okay, because I was happy about it. I mean, not the fact that I didn't get in, but the fact that I tried. I tried to take this instance of sadness and turn it into something that motivated me. I turned my jealousy into motivation. I put my effort in, into this thing. And that made me happier. And only when I was happy for myself could I be happy for other people. I was then happy for the friends I was once jealous of. When we tend to think of peace, when we tend to think of peace, we tend to think of the bigger picture. No more poverty, no more economic crisis, and no more nuclear wars. But think about ourselves. What about when we go nuclear? What about when the slightest thing just sets us off? One minor inconvenience ruins our day. We feel lost and hopeless. What about that? Personally, to me, peace means having less after-school activities so I have more time to myself. But all jokes aside, I believe that peace means being comfortable in your own skin, being happy with who you are. Oh my God. <laughs> being comfortable in your own skin, feeling happy for yourselves and for other people around you and definitely being cooler headed enough to turn your problems into solutions. I mean, think about it, people. Turning setbacks into opportunities, I know it sounds great on university applications and resumes, but it's foolproof. And if a teenager like me, who likes procrastinating, can do it, then so can you people. And the topic of my speech was how inner peace can lead to world peace, right? And I know it sounds unbelievable, how can the smallest actions you do actually have an impact. I mean, that's something we see in, that's something elders tell us, right? To make us feel better about being a failure. But no, because when, the moment you decide to take initiative, remember the phone charger incident I told you about? When I looked up for solutions for how to fix the problem, plot twist, my charger still isn't fixed. But it's okay, because I learned a lot of new things. For once, I, if someone else is in the same situation as me, I can help them. I may not have won the fight against technology, but I decided to turn the situation around and actually learn from it. So when we decide to not let bad days get the better of us, and instead we decide to learn from them, it's something we do by leading by example. In a way, we'll be teaching our friends and family that no, your every obstacle isn't a hurdle. All these issues we face can have secret benefits hiding behind them. We just have to use our willpower and perspective to figure them out. And in a way, Inner peace, that inner peace you feel when you're in control of your situation and in control of your life, that can spread to people around you. Maybe inner peace won't lead to peace for the whole 510 million square kilometers of the globe, but it will definitely lead to the people you care about feeling peaceful. And your world is composed of the people you care about, your friends and family. So yes, inner peace does lead to world peace. If what I say doesn't make sense, let me give you guys a few analogies. We're all familiar with the glass half full, half empty one, right? Half full, half empty means optimism or pessimism. But taking control of your life, turning setbacks into opportunities, that means drinking that glass of water to stay hydrated, because I'm sure none of you do that. On a, on another side note, we're all familiar with the lemon analogy, right? That when, so when life gives us lemons, we don't hold on to the lemons because we're too tired to fight back, nor do we fling the lemons at other people, even though that is very, very tempting. No, we make lemonade. So similarly, the next time you face a problem, the next time you feel like your day is going to be ruined because of something someone said, or because something didn't work out the way you want it to work out, you should remember that we are able to turn our problems into solutions. I'd like to end my speech by asking all of us to consider letting rejections 
not university applications, I mean romantic rejections. <laughs> letting, letting those kinds of incidents be, incidents be funny stories we can tell our kids and grandkids years down the line. Letting jealousy, envy be motivators rather than the desire to bring others down with us. And letting failure be a valuable experience to allow us to improve ourselves. Because sometimes we don't have an option but to learn. And you should take that education with you for the rest of your life. Because learning from bad days is the most and least we can do in that short time free period before we lose our minds.